Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on today's Everything Music. It's What Makes Us Song Great, episode 106. The band is Slipknot and the song is Before I Forget, coming up next. The song was on the 2004 release, Volume 3, Subliminal Verses, and was produced by Rick Rubin and written by the band. One thing I'd like to mention is the passing of Joey Jordison. Now, I met him actually in my first Slipknot video I did. This is my second breakdown actually off the same record. And I met Joey in 1999 when they were making their first record. They were doing some overdubs at NRG Studios, I believe it was, while I was working on a record there and hung out for a couple days with him. And he was the nicest guy. Anyways, this video is dedicated to Joey, who was uh, unfortunately passed away at the young age of 46. The song was mixed by Greg Fiddleman, who does a lot of Rick Rubin's records. It was named by AOL as Top Metal Song of the Decade and also won a Grammy for Best Metal Performance in 2006. The top of the song is a little tricky to play. <laughs> The riff that's played on here seems to be different from what they play live when I've seen them because it seems like they're that they're actually sliding on these but the riff actually I think is played like this in the recording <laughs> Let me solo the bass part because it's interesting what Paul is playing here at the beginning versus when they come full on with it because he actually just starts with the low string, right? The low B. Right? This is really kind of sets the power of it. Then he goes in the riff. That's incredibly well played. And another thing that you'll notice when I just soloed the guitars and soloing the bass, that's not quantized. That is really played because there's a lilt to it, consistent rhythmic thing going on, but it definitely sounds like it's really well played just all the way through. Next, I want to talk about the drums. What's interesting is that the initial beat, in the intro, Love the snare sound, but here, this kind of a beat, that 16th note kick accent that happens after the snare, that is right out of Voodoo Child, Jimi Hendrix. It also happens to be the same kind of groove. I call that like a funk groove, really. It's what Pearl Jam used on virtually every song on the first record. If you think of even flow, if you think of a live, just different tempos of it, or dissident, that kind of kick and bass pattern that he's playing there is very much out of a Hendrix school, although people don't probably think of that. But listen again. <laughs> Here's a great example. If you go to the song Go, it's his first song off Pearl Jam's second record verses. Check out the beat. Right here. Almost every song on the first two Pearl Jam records, not almost every song, a lot of the songs use that beat, that 16th note accent after the snare, Go, go da, um, which Joe is using. And it really comes out of that Hendrix song, Voodoo Child, and it's really... Uh, it's basically funk. It's cool. Before we go on, let's talk about this percussion part that goes right along with the snare. <laughs> and then that drum fill that Joey does right there. He goes bleh on at the very end of that fill. Listen. Okay, 
Okay, this section is in C sharp. It's going between the uh, C sharp D power chord, like a Phrygian sound. Well, that's one mean tone right there. So check it out. Going from the verse. Drums still doing that along with the floor time. They have these little keyboard stabs. It's really hard to play tight like that. Super tight. Let's check out the vocals here, though. Because that's really... Stable shots! Inside and outside what and I'm... Sealed in tight! Bizarre right at home! Love the layering of the vocals that happen right there too. Okay, the pre-chorus has a really killer guitar part right here. Oh, We have a scratching going on there along with the pinch harmonics. Let's do it in the mix. Then you have this line. Here's those two parts together actually with the scratching and the. That has so much rhythmic energy just in those parts there. And then we have this demonic vocal that happens. Listen. Pray the strings through the shapes. Hold your breath. Listen! I am a world before I am a man. Great singing, too. Pray the strings through the shapes. And then the drum groove that goes on in this pre chorus. Listen. It's almost like a fusion drum part right there. Listen again. Love the bell. Woo! One of the things that he does here, too, is these kind of fills. I love, I love those triplets, those super fast triplet fills like that that happen. And then let's check out the chorus. I, I am a world. There's that pause, right, that happens just before the chorus. So that crowd sound that happens right there, I think it's a combination of, a, um, of the scream that Corey's doing along with some type of a crowd sound and distortion listen I'm a man I was a creature before I could stand I will remember I mean that is that's a lot of really creative layering there I know what it's like to try and get sounds like that I mean that really sounds good it's not just his distortion not the distortion on his voice, but it's also that blending of that gang vocal or crowd sound along with distortion and it's a perfect combination of them. So it sounds really intense and cuts through the mix. Listen again. Next, let's talk about what the guitars do in the chorus. Check it out. I'll solo them. Let me play along with it. So 
what's interesting about this is that this riff here, even though it starts at one, two, when he goes to the second half of the chorus, he goes up a fourth, even though it starts on a downbeat, it doesn't start on two, but it's like, which is the same thing as, so it's the same riff, move up a fourth without that accent on the two. Okay, let's talk about the drums going into the chorus. So since the chorus's hits are on two, check out the fills that Joey does, because they're amazing. Listen. Love those triplets. So tight. Woo! Right there, listen to that one. I mean, really, this is incredibly... Another thing that, this is on a technical level here, but the... When he's riding the crash, that's what I call that, riding the crash, that the cymbals are not over compressed. For those of you mixers out there that do rock, when you have the drummer playing on the, the crash cymbal like that, psh, 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 which is a common thing to do to kind of level up in a chorus, don't compress the stuff. Like this sounds really natural. The drums, the, the cymbals moving nicely, doesn't sound phasey or anything. Really good. Is that China? What's cool about this part here, too, is you notice there's right at the beginning of this second half, this part, listen. He has some kicks along with the snares, listen. Right there. Every one of those triplet fills is so tight. It's so well played, man. Woo. And then. And then back into that fusion part, really. I mean, this, this totally, it's total fusion. Listen. incredibly good drumming. The other thing too, when he's doing the hi-hat there, I call that chaining on the hi-hat when you're hitting it. Psh, 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 psh. You notice it doesn't sound all weird, over compressed. It's not compressed at all. All those snare hits are so consistent. Everything about the drum part is really incredibly good. Next, let's move to the bridge. Essentially, the second verse and chorus are similar to the first, but the groove on the bridge goes to halftime. So the snare will be on three then. Check it out. Really cool. Snare. One, two, You now you notice that there's a really cool part between the guitar, which is playing that drone thing that sounds like this with the open string. And the piano that's Let me play them both together so you can hear what they sound like. Okay, so that guitar and piano part together, if we were to analyze it, it's like a... Starts out with a flat nine interval. And this is a major seventh. And then up to the minor third on the C sharp minor. And then... And then back to... Um, and then the second time through, it goes to A. Along with that, there's a second guitar part that happens too. So check this out. That actually fills in the harmonic progression there. So if I actually take the piano out, listen just to the guitars. Beautiful. 
I'm going to put the piano back in and bring the bass so you can hear the bass along with those two guitar parts. Check it out. Let's hear it in context. I love this little drum fill that happens right there. Check this out. It's just so subtle, but. Oh! That is a killer fill. Listen. Oh! Okay, so the drums are recorded so well on this, too. You got it appreciate the production values too. Not only is it a great song, but it sounds great. I mean, this is really one of these things where you can appreciate the production. Even if you don't like heavy music, this is just technically done so well. It's played well, and the, the tones are just amazing, right? So here it is in context, check that out. <laughs> Check out that scream there. The end of the road. I am a world before I am a man. The creature before I can stand. I remember before I forget. Before I forget that. I am a world before I am a man. I the creature before I can stand. I remember before I forget. That's the best fill in the song right there. Listen to that. Let me play a whole section of that. That's like a Neil Peart drum fill, honestly. That's a total rush drum fill. But the double kicks are so tight. And he goes back to the fusion part right there. Did it to that? Listen. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.